Good morning and welcome to Strong and Balance. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here at PeopleFit. If you've never done this type of class before, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first. With that in mind, let's get started. We're going to do a little warm up. Knees are going to be soft, belly buttons in, shoulders are back. And we're going to do a nice gentle head circle in one direction. Remember, only do the things that you are comfortable doing. And if there are things you know you should avoid, please do. And let's go on in the opposite direction. All of these exercises can be done at a countertop, um, a kitchen sink, as long as you don't put me in the sink itself, um, or maybe what, near a wall or back of a sturdy chair. Fantastic. And let's do some arm circles in one direction. Good, and let's reverse that direction. And we're gonna come back and forth. If you'd like to start warming up your lower body, we're just gonna step back at an angle arms come back as leg comes back and as you start to warm up and you realize i do not have any knee pain you can get a little bit lower into that little lunge good by stepping back making sure my front knee is not going over my toe for five four three two and one nice arch in your back belly button tight and we're just going to mark in place hopefully you guys are all getting a lot of fluids in you it has been hot i guess one more day fantastic Feet nice and wide this time, knees are bent, bottom is sticking out, and we're just gonna do a little bit of rotation side to side. Fantastic. Feet about hips width apart. Let's come back on your heels and up onto your toes. Heels and toes. We're probably going to spend the last 10 minutes of class today, as we do on most Wednesdays, getting down on the floor. Good. When you're doing your heel and toes, remember, when you come back on your heels, it's not sticking your bottom up, but just leaning back. Even if you feel like you can't quite get those toes up off the floor, as long as you're pulling your toes up in your shoes. In five, four, three, two, and one. Arm out to the side, hand on your hip. Let's slide your left foot back till it touches your heel to your toe. Let's bend this knee nice and soft, hip is in, and let's draw that leg out and back. You can do it without bringing the foot back down to the ground, even better. I like to keep my left hand on my hip to make sure that hip is down. And my toes are pointing straight ahead for five, four, three, two, and one. And let's switch to the other side. Draw that foot back and let's come out to the side. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get into one of uh, four balance positions. The easiest is feet together. If that's easy for you, you can try heel to the inside of your big toe one foot in front of the other or the most challenging obviously is one foot up off the ground 
you figure out which position works best for you. Knees are soft. And let's just do some head turns left and right. So if you find yourself stepping a lot, then you can go to one of the easier positions. If you find that this is super easy, you most certainly could go to one of the more difficult positions. The idea is to get, get your feet to do some dancing in your shoes, but you don't have to step too often. In three, two, one. And let's switch feet. If you had your feet staggered, we're gonna do the other side. And let's do some head turns left and right. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go arm out to the side, hand on your hip, and you're just gonna do a little lift with your left knee. If that's super easy for you, you can make the letter X with your whole leg, not just your ankle making the X. We'll make a little X. Cross, cross, cross. It's always easier to do all of these exercises if this hip is in and your knee is soft. Or just come up and tap that toe back down on the ground. If you want to challenge yourself, let's just slow down that stepping for three, two, one, excellent job. Let's go over to the other side. Same exact thing. Knee up and down. Four, letter X. Either way. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get right back into your balance position that you were in a minute ago. This time we're gonna bring your hands up, clasp them together, your thumbs are gonna be up. And now we're gonna do a little rotation. So let's really squat down and you're gonna look at your left thumbnail as you rotate side to side. If you're looking at other parts of the room, it's easier to balance, so we really want you to focus on in on that left thumbnail. And three more. Two. And one. Let's switch feet, please. Same exact thing, except you're gonna look at that right thumbnail now. As you rotate side to side, you don't have to go so far that it's bothering your back. And if it bothers your shoulders to be up in this position, you can lower them down a little bit as we rotate side to side. For three more, two, and one. Excellent work. Let's shift over onto that side again. Let's really make sure we get over there. And now we're gonna to start to do just a straight leg raise, kicking that left leg up and down. If this is easy, we're gonna add an arm to it. Left arm up and down. Arm and leg together. Good. Now let's try it out to the side, coming out. And returning, again, you can do it just with the leg. Out. And one more. And let's go back now. Extend both arm and leg. Back. And back. And let's add those all together. So let's go forward to challenge yourself. Let's go to the side. You can slow it down. And let's go back. Forward, side, 
and back, forward, side, and back, and one more, forward, side, and back. Okay, let's lean over to the other side. Let's really focus on getting some weight on the outside border of this foot with a nice soft knee, feet are together. And let's either raise the leg up and down or you can do it with the arm and leg. So challenge yourself again, you can slow it down or you can try not to bring your foot quite back down to the ground, okay? Which is quite challenging. Let's go out to the side and back, side and back. This is a challenging exercise. And let's go back. When you extend back, remember belly buttons in, you're not overarching the back. You're using these glutes to extend that leg. And one more, good. And let's see if we can put it all together for three repetitions. Forward, side, and back. Forward, side, and back, and one more, forward, side, and back. Okay, let's go back to your calf raises. This time we're gonna do them with the toes slightly in. We're gonna go up on the toes and back on the heels. If you can, especially when you're coming up onto those feet, to work those little muscles in the bottom of your feet, Try to grip the ground with your toes like you're grasping onto the floor. In five, four, Three, two, and one. Let's stretch out those calf muscles and your hips at the same time. If you want to do this holding on to a wall or countertop, you might get a more effective stretch. But if not, let's turn your uh, right foot slightly in. Nice long step forward with the left. Belly buttons in, right? We're doing a little pelvic tilt. We're pulling the hips underneath us. And while you're in this position with your shoulders back, we're gonna bend the front knee, trying to keep that back heel on the ground. You'll either feel a gentle stretch in the front of this hip, maybe in the calf, or you mysteriously stop. One of the three is gonna occur. I'm sure there's other possibilities. And we're gonna hold, like most stretches, we're gonna to try to do at least about 30 seconds. And 10 more seconds. Excellent work. Let's turn the opposite toe in and we're gonna take a nice long step forward with the opposite foot. Good, if you find that front knee is straightening out, bend it a little bit more. Let's get right into that stretch. Fantastic. All right, we're gonna step forward onto your left foot. We're gonna bend your left knee because we really want these glute muscles back here working. We're gonna tap your right toe behind you. Again, if you need to hold on even one or two fingers on a wall, that's fine. Or hands on your hip. You're gonna lean forward at your waist slightly and you're gonna kick your heel up towards the ceiling. If the knee of the foot that's tapping, if you can keep it behind the other knee, that would be great. A lot of people will do this instead, which is a different exercise. We're really trying to focus on 
hamstrings and glutes. And you pitch slightly forward, you're probably looking four to five feet in front of you on the floor. Nice long spine for four, three, two, and one. Let's switch to the other side. Lean forward at your waist, tap your toe behind you, and let's kick on up and down. If it bothers your knee and it's cracking, you can always try turning your toe in or out a little bit to get away from some of that. Make sure that front knee is staying slightly bent. For five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. From here, we're gonna stretch out your hamstrings and your lower back. If you have osteoporosis, I want you to hold on to something or if you have lower back pain, you can either skip this exercise or heel down and you're gonna lean forward with a nice arch in your back so you feel the stretch behind your calf, uh, hamstring here. You don't have either of those things. Knees are soft, you're gonna forward fold into this, allowing yourself to hang. If at any point you develop any back pain, I want you to take a nice deep breath Bend your knees and uncurl into a standing position. Otherwise, you're gonna use your breath to exhale into this exercise. You're not forcing anything. You're just allowing yourself to hang. If you're stretching one leg, I ask you to stretch the other. And let's do five more nice deep breaths. Good, last breath, breathe in, bend your knees, uncurl into a standing position, and then I want you to march in place and breathe, breathe, breathe. Don't hold your breath, that's how you pass out. Breathe, 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 pump those arms. Let's get the blood all back up to your head where it belongs. If you're noticing that you're a little bit more lightheaded with that type of exercise than usual, it means you probably need a little bit more fluids in you. Fantastic, all right. We're gonna do just a couple of steps forward and back before we get either into bed or onto the floor for the next set of exercises. We need about three or four feet of space to do a little bit of walking the tightrope. You can do that for most of you, starting with your heel to the inside of your big toe. Remember tightrope walkers have soft knees. And then we're gonna step forward. This is super easy. Bring your foot in directly heel to toe. Good. And another step forward. And one more step forward. Let's try stepping backwards. Backwards, we could do it with just one step, that would be great. Step backwards, sometimes it takes multiple steps. And backwards. If you'd like, we can try some head turns with this. So step forward and turn your head right, then left. Step forward, head right, and left. Step forward, head right, and left. And step forward, head right, and left. Let's step on back. And guess what? Head right and left. Step backwards, knees are soft, right and left. Step on back, right and left. And one more, back, right and left. Okay, um, why don't you grab yourself a quick glass of water um, and then either get into bed or onto the floor. If you have a resistance band that you would like to use, uh, please grab the resistance band at this time. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, so we're going to start off on your back. If you have lower back issues or osteoporosis, we're going to do some gentle pelvic tilts. Okay, so that's when you relax your legs, but you push your lower back into the floor and tighten up these abdominal muscles. Okay. Uh, if you don't have any of those things and would like to try a little bit of bicycling, that's fine. We're going to push your lower back, same exact thing hands on the sides of the head, not pulling on the neck. And we're just gonna do a little bit of bicycling, okay? The key is you can't allow your back to arch. So we want to make sure, so if you can just bicycle up here, that's fine. If you wanna try elongating those strides a little bit to work your um, abdominals a little bit more, that is fine. A lot of times doing it with the head slightly off the ground is a good idea. Or you're just doing your pelvic tilts where you're holding for about five seconds and then relaxing. Holding for five seconds and relaxing. We're gonna go about 10 more seconds here. And here you go. For four, three, two, one. Great. Let's bring your arms out to the side if you have the space to do this. Your shoulder blades are gonna make nice contact with the floor. And with your feet and your knees together, we're just gonna warm up your lower back a little bit by dropping both of your knees from one side to the other. A little lower trunk rotation. Good, five more. Four, three, two, and one. Great for the next exercise. I'm gonna give you three different options. We're either gonna do a bridge where we pull our belly button in and lift up. Again, if you have lower back issues, I prefer maybe just the pelvic tilt again. Or you could try a one-legged bridge, which is you're lifting up and back down, okay? But all of it involves belly button in and a nice strong core, right? So we're gonna hold each of these for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna do five of them. Two, and down, back up. Three, two more. Four, and last one, five. If you're doing the pelvic tilts, continue to do them. If you're doing one leg, I'm gonna ask you to switch to the other leg, please. And let's come on up and down. Let's come on up. Whichever leg is get, getting raised up in the air, make sure your pelvis isn't dropping on that side. And down, and three more. Good, two more, and last one, excellent. Let's all straighten out your right leg. We're gonna gently pull your left knee up towards your chest. You can grab behind the knee. If you have a hip replacement, I would just be nice and gentle with this one. If your knees do not bother you and you want to get a little bit more of a stretch, you can grasp the top of your knee and gently pull that knee up towards your chest. And 10 more seconds here. And let's switch to the other side. And 10 more seconds on this side, please. Excellent. If you have a resistance band, a little mini band like this, you can put it right above your knees on both legs. Okay, let's come into a sideline position and we're gonna do some clamshells to get started with. Okay, however your head is comfortable on your forearm or on a pillow or propped up, knees are bent, 
feet are together and let's open and close that clamshell. Open and close. Good. I like to do it with my hand on my hip so that my hip isn't rolling backwards. Then I'm just doing my lower back and not these fan shaped muscles. If it's painful in your hip, you can always try either bringing the knees up a little bit or down a little bit to see if that gets rid of it. In three, two, and one. Let's straighten out both of your legs in line with your body. Let's bend the back, the bottom foot back for support. You're gonna roll your hips slightly forward and then extend your top leg back towards the back wall. And with your toes pointing straight ahead, we're just gonna come up and down. I know those are a lot of instructions, but if you do all those things right, hopefully you get to gluteus medius in the back of the hip. You're not bringing your foot all the way back down to planet earth. If this is too much of an exercise, you can try just holding it there and just holding the leg off the ground. But let's do three more, two, and one. All right, let's roll that top leg forward. Your kneecap and your toe are against, are facing down towards the floor. And rolled slightly forward, you're gonna to try to bring your heel up towards the ceiling, okay? So we're really gonna get these rotators back here. Sometimes this almost feels a little uncomfortable. No worries if you don't have any pain later. Maybe just a little bit of soreness. For five, four, three, two, and one. Very nice work. You get rewarded for your hard work by rolling over and doing the other side. So again, we're gonna get into your clamshell position and we're just gonna open and close the clam. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's straighten out both legs. Let's bend the bottom foot back, roll your hip forward and extend your leg back and let's do a straight leg raise to the side. Good, just up and down. Doesn't have to go very high. Another reason I like my hand on my hip is to keep it away from my ear. I'm pushing my hip down. So I'm not just shortening my midsection here, okay? Keep this exercise for the hips. In three, two, one. Let's gently roll forward to get your toe on the floor. Heel is up towards the ceiling and you're gonna lift up and down. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's come right on to your back, please. Take your band off, soles of the feet together, letting the knees drop down to the side. If you don't have much of a stretch here, you can take your hands and place them on your thighs just to gently push down. And you're gonna hold that stretch. And if there are other stretches you typically do on the floor, this would be a good time to do them. And with that, thank you for joining me for class today. I hope you guys all have a great day. Take care.